anything in order, turn off the cell phones and the atom, and put them on mute. <laughs> the current one for me to announce that the executive session was held at 6 30 this evening to discuss personnel legal issues. I'm going to rise from the President Richard McCoy. And it comes back on and then it kicks him out again.
Superintendent's report, Governor Pepper. Thank you, Mr. McCommons. Good evening and happy Groundhog Day. Um, I'm beginning to think that every day is Groundhog Day for the past year. Um, just to review, as stated in our last Board of Education meeting, this evening's Committee of the Whole meeting was rescheduled a week earlier in order to reassess our county and local COVID data and make recommendations regarding any change to our instructional model. We are very happy that our county's incident and percent positivity rate for COVID has continued to decline. Even though our county currently remains in a substantial transmission rate, our county continues to move closer to a moderate transmission rate for COVID-19, and our hospitals currently are not overwhelmed with sick COVID patients. Additionally, the Greater Lake Trobe School Community's zip code range, which includes Lake Trobe, Hostetter, Pleasant Unity, and one-third of the population in Greensboro, based on the past seven days, actually falls into the moderate rate of transmission for COVID. Again, that is within the Greater Lake Trobe zip code range only. We are happy to report that 433 teachers, staff, and bus drivers received the first dose of the Moderna vaccine and will receive the second dose in the upcoming weeks. A special thanks goes to the medicine shop in Latro for providing the vaccines and to Lori Strapay from Pennsylvania Education Association. Receiving the vaccine for our staff and bus driver greatly assists in protecting our teachers, staff, and bus drivers from contracting COVID-19 and it paves the way for our schools to open and remain open for brick and mortar instruction for our students. Please note that the district is being proactive in responding to staff and bus drivers who may have adverse side effects after receiving the second dose of the Moderna vaccine. Therefore, we do have a calendar change this evening all of our buildings, elementary through secondary, will participate in full remote learning on Monday, February 22nd and Monday, March 1st to provide our staff and bus drivers with an additional 24 hours to recover from any adverse reaction to the vaccination. Having remote learning on Monday, February 22nd and Monday, March 1st, will assist us in any staffing and bus driver shortages that may possibly occur as a result of individuals experiencing residual side effects from the vaccine. At this point in time, in addition to our elementary schools being open full time for brick and mortar instruction, it is my recommendation that our junior and senior high schools open for full-time brick-and-mortar instruction beginning Monday, February 8th. As always, parents and guardians may choose to have their students participate in full-time GLSD online instruction as opposed to the brick-and-mortar setting. As we transition back to our brick and mortar instructional model at our junior and senior high schools, please note the following. Number one, if your student is currently participating in hybrid A or B, and you wish for your student to return to full brick and mortar instruction, no action is required. However, if you wish to change your student from hybrid A or B to full-time GLSD online, you must contact the office of your student's school by this Friday, February 5th. Likewise, if your student is currently participating in full-time GLSD online, 
and you are choosing for them to return to brick and mortar instruction, you must also contact the office of your student school to make the change by the conclusion of Friday, February 5th. All EWCT students will also attend brick and mortar five days a week at the EWCTC school. Please be reminded that the school district signed an attestation form ensuring implementation of mitigation efforts, which include mandated face coverings and recommendations for pre-K to 12 schools following identification of COVID-19 cases and the closing of schools. Parents and guardians are reminded to review the Greater Latrobe School District protocols found under the COVID-19 tab on our district website. We look forward to having all of our students back in our schools for face-to-face -face instruction and increased socialization. Greater Latrobe School District will continue to monitor our county and school communi community COVID data and do our very best to provide brick and mortar instruction for our students while keeping the health, safety, and welfare of our entire school community as a priority. Thank you.
It certainly must be acknowledged that 80% of our students' cohort of test takers within Pennsylvania are in the same boat educationally. And we learned this evening that 10 schools within Westmoreland County are also still in hybrid, with only three in full brick and mortar. Why can't we continue in hybrid? It is working and it is allowing for necessary social distancing. As our tour through the secondary schools illustrated last week, many of our classroom guests are only three and a half to four feet distant. That is for an 85 minute period in the high school. Much closer spacing and far longer times than the CDC, the Department of Education, and the Department of Public Health recommend. And that's in hybrid. Those situations become much more dire in full brick and mortar. Our district has always been a leader in technology and in professional development to make that technology a lodestar for educational excellence. We are fortunate to be able to provide both Chromebooks and Wi-Fi hotspots for students without broadband. We are better prepared for the hybrid model of education than perhaps many other districts within our county and maybe in the Western PA region. Yet we refuse to give our teachers the time and latitude to make hybrid work. This disregard for our superior hardware and technology and training of our staff makes me question why we have invested so much in this area if we are not willing to allow our teachers to show its full capabilities. And please remember, in-school instruction during a pandemic looks very different from in-person instruction before the pandemic. It may not be the panacea everyone believes it to be. Elementary kids are still required to be socially distanced from their friends at all times. Secondary students are not working in groups, they are not doing meaningful peer work, and they are not doing black working on labs. Just because they are physically in the building does not mean there is significant meaningful instruction occurring. And conversely, it is also true that when they are hybrid, that there is zero meaningful instruction happening. I request that until the entire staff has had their second shots, we are so close. And I would hate to think that a rush decision on our part to, to go, high, or go back to in-person instruction would put any of our staff or students in harm's way. Thank you. Any other questions on the motion? I was, uh, just to say, I was at the tour as well. Um, for most of it, and, and there's several buildings, three buildings uh, to be exact. I felt very comfortable with our staff um, and principals explaining to us exactly what was happening, how the, how the students would come back if they were full time, full student occupancy in the buildings. But we know that's not correct either because I think there's somewhere around 700 or still, uh, there was a number 450 or 700 that were still going to be online. I can't remember what that count was. I have it. Six, six hundred. Six hundred as, as of today. And that was school wide, all schools. Right? Yeah. So they felt comfortable with that. I spoke to the principals. They felt comfortable that they could make a combination to put the kids in other rooms, other auditoriums, spread the kids out to keep them safe. Um, I felt comfortable walking through uh, and talking to some of the teachers. I talked to some of the staff. I talked to some of the custodians and our, and our um, facilities director. In addition, I also earlier this evening um, asked Dr. Uh, Zorch to explain the difference between substantial, as stated by the Department of Health and VA, and what substantial means as it relates to the hospital. And I, thought, I would ask Dr. Zorch if he has a moment to please discuss that one more time uh, so the public can hear it so we can get it on the record. Um, yep. Yes, yeah. we can. The reason that substantial was put into place was to justify uh, all the mitigation efforts that were done by the state. Because the concern was that substantial community transmission, that the hospital system was overwhelmed by COVID patients, 
and that they would put the hospital systems at extreme stress and result in not being able to take care of patients. Even though our county numbers still look substantial, the hospital hospitalization rate has come way down in our county. So there is not a threat on the hospital system right now as it was a month ago. It's probably going to continue to cut down because we see the case numbers continuing to drop in our county. So the hospitals will be less stressed. There was also a large study done uh, in the state of North Carolina looking at multiple school districts and multiple students and looking at community transmission as a result of school transmission. And their conclusion in that, that study was that schools do not contribute to community advantage. It doesn't mean the kids can't get sick. It doesn't mean the staff member can't get sick. But them, them causing the community transmission rate to skyrocket a bit more does not seem to be the case. But from that study, which is science, it seems that we are safe in allowing our students to go back to school because if we decreased stress on the hospital system and also because of the study that was done. And this was a recent study. And this was done uh, during the height of the pandemic as well. So I think uh, with all the other things the CDC has said, even our president, president of the present time is pushing for schools to be open. And one of the mandates that they want schools to do is to uh, facilitate making the air cleaner that the children are breathing in school, which we've done. Our school has done that. Your, at the beginning, look at that, as that has been done. We do have a ventilation system in place that supposedly will protect students from getting sick. And as long as children uh, do the social distancing and mask wearing and the staff are the same, you should uh, be safe. That doesn't mean somebody's going to get sick. It probably will happen. But everyone needs to know, too, that children with this disease, do not seem to get sick from it. Some do, unfortunately, and that happens with the flu, too. So we have always been worried about the staff in this situation, and we're trying to protect the staff. I don't know what the age differential is on our staff, but the level of immunity from one vaccine is not too bad, at least 50%. And if you look at a flu vaccine, a flu vaccine in the best years is 50%. So even with one vaccination, we should have some protection for our staff. And the younger the staff are, the better immune response they have, because they may be protected with one shot. You don't want to take that chance by not getting two vaccinations, obviously that's the recommendation. But I think with all the things our school district has done, and looking at why the expansion is put into place to protect hospital system, I think at the present time, we are in a situation where We've been wanting to get our kids back into school. I think it's time to do it. I think it's time to get everybody back. Obviously, we're going to be monitoring the situation, and if things change, we're going to be changing our, our program. Right now, I think uh, we've got to act, and the numbers are good, and we've got to get our kids back into school where the best served by our teachers in our school community. Could you also Thank you. Could you also touch on what we talked about as far as the pediatric hospital here in Pittsburgh, about the case number there currently? And then also, can you, and I, I know you were on the call uh, when we were talking about the um, mental and physical abuse issues uh, that we're seeing not only in our district, but across all the districts, um, and the number and the higher numbers of mental health uh, issues as well. Is that for me? Yes, sir. Yeah, there's no question about that. When you look across the uh, country as a whole, that, that's been a serious issue. Uh, there's a tremendous stress on the students. There's a tremendous stress on uh, the community dealing with kids being home. There was a, we had a uh, county meeting of the task force here, not about a month or so ago, and I can't remember the exact date, it was in December, I know that. And one of the main things that I got out of this thing was the under-reporting of uh, child abuse and 
all that kind of stuff that we're missing too for the kids not being in the school. So getting our kids back to the school, we're, we're helping our community, I think. We're helping it. I know there's still a pandemic going on, but again, kids aren't at risk from the disease as much as they are from killing themselves. We're getting beat up or abused in a home that's not a good home. So if you get them out of, out of the school where they're around people that can watch them and keep track of this sort of thing, I think we're doing a service to that small number of children who are at risk because they are out. I know that's not the biggest case in our community as in other communities, but certainly that would be a consideration as well. Then we also talked about the limited number of cases that we're seeing in uh, Children's Hospital of children. Well, this was about a month and a half ago when we had the county meeting. And the comment that struck me the most was the nurse manager of Children's Hospital during the height of this whole thing post the uh, uh, Thanksgiving spike in cases that their number of cases in the children's hospital were at a minimum. They weren't concerned. They weren't anywhere near to being overwhelmed or anywhere near to being stressed. I don't know what the exact words were, but I was struck by the fact that she said that we're not that stressed right now. We don't have as many cases. Now that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It doesn't mean that these poor kids can't get to the uh, post uh the time of course the bee syndrome, I forget the name of it now, but obviously that's always a concern when kids get sick, but you know this this really not has not been a disease of young kids for sure. The older kids seem to be an increased risk and even in that population, the kids are very risk for the kids with underlying conditions. And we're obviously giving people a chance to keep their children home to be online. If they are in the future, it's because of some disease process that they shouldn't be around anybody to get a chance to get sick. They have that option to stay home. So we're not putting those two in that place either. I think we gave that option to teachers as well. We thought that the teacher thought that they were at increased risk or increased uh, chance of getting sick and dying from this disease. We gave them the option to uh, get it online. So please correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Patrick. I think. That was one of the discussions that we had a long time ago about this whole thing. We're, we're doing the best that we can to protect our students and our staff. We're not going to stop all the cases. It's going to happen. We're going to see kids get sick. We're going to see adults get sick. Unfortunately, some of them will get really sick if they do get sick. But the chances of that occurring is not that great for the kids, for sure. And right now, since people are getting immunized, it's going to be some the great protection and the social distancing and the hand washing and the fast wearing over and over again we've heard that they were the best way to protect people and you know, as long as they follow the directions and keep them keep themselves safe, they should be okay. You know, we have we have a giant eagle open, we have a Walmart open, we have roads open, we've got all those people working in those stores that around hundreds and hundreds of people a day. And I haven't heard any in the paper to see anything in the news where they become super spreaders of that. So I'm confident that the things that we're doing, that we're going to protect our staff and our students. Thanks. Can I have one more question, please? One more question to ask, Mrs. Thomas Slovish. Um, we spoke earlier, we were talking about the modality of suicide and so on and so forth. You had mentioned that we have the, the number of folks we had in mental health getting treated. But you also said there's a, a, a number that we can figure out because we don't know who's home and not being allowed to report. Can you explain how we treat the kids, the age of 14, that whole bit, in a short form, just so everybody understands that as well? And sure. I keep barking on the mental part because it's, it's horrifying numbers that I'm seeing across the country. Sure. Um, students in Pennsylvania can consent to mental health treatment when they turn 14. Right now, across the school district, we have 75 students in grades 7 through 12 and an additional 63 students in grades K through 6 who receive mental health treatment at school during their school day. There is an option for online or virtual therapy, but especially for students who are ages 14 and older, if they are not in a home or in a situation where that is possible for privacy, or consent reasons or even childcare or helping with younger siblings, uh, those students are going without therapy right now. 
And it is very important to have those students back in the school setting so that they can receive their consistent regular therapy. And then our the most current, the most current year we have for full in-house school, aren't we about 40% of that number as far as treatments? Or was it 30 or 40? Uh, slightly, slightly different data. Um, we have, we keep track of students who have expressed suicidal ideation to their school counselors. And if we keep tracking the way we are now, we're at about, uh, we're headed for a 43% increase from two years ago in students who are expressing suicidal ideation at our senior high school. Our, our numbers will almost double from two years ago. Thank you, Ms. Blake. You're welcome. If I could just um, clarify for Dr. Zorch, I finally found it on my calendar. We attended a meeting with the medical expert response team within Allegheny and Westmoreland counties. It was Wednesday, December 16th at 6.30. And the representative from Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh, I'm glad Lori Golovich has a better memory than I, I have it in my notes, was Marnie Kamansky, who made the comments about um, the uh, cases they were seeing at Children's Hospital. Again, that was back in December, December 16th. I just thought Dr. Zorch had asked and I didn't have it. I was COVID cases talking about, no, no. Pardon me? Talking about COVID cases, right? Yes, COVID cases. Not mental health, I apologize. Any other questions or comments? Yes, this is the Vice President. I, I do. I have a couple of comments and, and a question. Uh, I, I think that we've been hearing for a long time how kids don't get sick with this COVID, and it seems to be something that keeps coming up meeting after meeting. In fact, sometimes we use the term, kids don't get as sick as they get with the flu. And in my heart, I, I, I just lose my mind every time I hear it because I want to say most kids don't. Most kids don't. And that's great, and I'm thankful, and that's the only reason I can sit here and even consider having these kids back in this school. But they can get sick, and they do get sick, and some of them get really sick. And some of them right here in our district have gotten really sick. And one child getting too sick is too many. So, I can't sit quietly to keep listening to that. Um, secondly, a uh, comment was just made about store employees. The Giant Eagle's open, the Walmart's open, Lowe's is open. Store employees see people and they're not getting sick. A store employee, a cashier, encounters the same person for a few minutes at most when they check out from their cash register. A teacher in an elementary school spends the entire day with that cohort of students. A teacher in our junior high or our senior high sees 100 students, 120 students, 150 students, and spends, as I recall, somewhere around 85 or 90 minutes at a time with those kids now. Extended long periods of time. Apples and oranges, we can't compare a checkout clerk at Lowe's to a teacher spending a 90 minute period in a crowded classroom. So those are two different things again. What I saw when I toured the schools this week was administrators and students and teachers do an amazing job. They are digging deep, they are going outside the box, they are trying everything in their power to keep this district full of students safe. And God bless them for that because that's what makes Lake Trope amazing. And excuse me. And I get it. Kids want to be in school. Parents want to be in school. I get it. I want them in school too. But the, the number of kids in a classroom in a hybrid situation and the number of kids in a classroom with full work and order is a whole different story. And they're telling us they're doing everything in their power and God bless them, I believe they are. There just isn't enough square footage. There just isn't. And so we can say, you know, our hospitals aren't overcrowded, or our 
teacher should just buck up and get out there. Or we could say, darn it, we got them vaccinated, they got their first round, give them a couple of weeks. Let some immunity build. Protect them because we can. Because we have the opportunity to make the choice to say, they're in hybrid now. They're glad to be in school. Their teachers are glad to have them. They're glad to see their classmates. But when we have 12 kids or 15 kids in the classroom, it's a very different story than having 25 or 30 kids in a classroom. And that teacher has those kids crowded all around them because they're trying to spread their dust out as far as they possibly can. There just simply isn't enough square footage. And that teacher stays in that same room for 90 minutes. So we need to face what it really is. We can't pretend it's the same thing as a checkout clerk at the Lowe's. It's not. That was not my statement. And we, I didn't say it was your statement. Okay. But it was a statement made publicly That's by right. an expert. And it's apples and oranges and it's not the same story. We have a responsibility to our students. We have a responsibility to our teachers and our staff. And we have a responsibility to the parents and the community. And they all have to be considered by us. We don't work for just one. We work for them all. And it's unreasonable to think that it's the same thing to have that classroom full as it is to have 12 kids in it or 10 kids in it. Teachers should be considered, too. We like to say, if parents are worried or kids are scared, their kids don't have to come to school. And I think that's fabulous. We offer GLSD online. And God bless us that we do, because if it were my kid, he'd be on GLSD online. I don't have any kids in the school. But I care about those other 3,700 kids, 3, kids just like their mom. But the teachers don't get that choice. The teachers have a mortgage to pay. The teachers have to put food on the table. And if they decide they don't want to work under the rules that we make, their only choice is to not work. I don't think that's correct. Well, you know what we said? Dr. Zorch just said that the teachers can choose to stay home if they don't want to come to school. But from what I understand, the teachers have to have a pretty significant medical concern that they can document. They can't just say, I don't want to be in a crowded classroom where I'm every day coming through the door and not knowing if today is the day I go home with COVID and take it to my family. They don't get to choose for that reason. So when we decide that we're going to go back because a parent, a kid can choose, or a parent can choose GLSD online, we aren't giving that choice to our teachers. And that's not nothing. One last thing I want to ask. Before we took this vote last month, the Health and Safety Committee met. And we heard not just from Dr. Source, but we heard the opinions from Dr. Jenkins, Dr. Mills, Dr. Moran. Do we know how they feel about this decision today? Have we heard from them? I can tell you, when we met last time, two Mondays ago, their comment was, it needs to be, our numbers are declining, and if our numbers continue to decline, it needs to come to the decision of the board and the recommendation from the administration. There is no perfect day um, to go back. That's what they said, the decision needs to come. They did not so fail. They, interested in giving an opinion they did they not, they did not feel, and I can look at who was there because I know Mrs. Dr. Zorch. Dr. Zorch was there, Mrs. Kozar was there, Mr. Lacasio was there, I was there, Mrs. Gologish, Mrs. Pellis, Mr. Music. Um, they, if the hospital, like Dr. Zorch said, if the hospitals continue to see the decline as they have and they're not stressed, and if the numbers in our area continue to decline, they said it's the decision of recommendation, administration, decision of the Board of Education. That's why we didn't. I can tell you on that meeting, there were a couple of physicians who would have supported going back full time then, five days a week, brick and mortar of the secondary. 
because they truly question um, differences in, in, in cases coming up at the secondary level versus the elementary level. And the fact that their feelings were that these students are together on the weekends and on the days off anyway, and they feel that we can regulate it more while they're in school during the time, and that actually they would be safer in school at times versus being at home. And those comments came from a couple of physicians, not the administration or board. And that's something that's correct. What the physician that said that? Get out whatever you want to say. Yeah. Second of all, if you would like to speak to our pediatrics, the article on pediatrics, Dr. Tucker has the uh, reference to it. I don't have access to it right now because I'm on my phone or it's on my phone on the uh, message board. But if you want to read that article and look about transmission in schools, you're more than welcome to. We're not making anything up. I didn't say anything. To think that would equate teaching school with working in Lowe's or Walmart or wherever is absurd. So I resent those kinds of comments as well. So take that as you will. I'm going to stick with my decision as far as I think right now it's time for these kids to go back. No, that 
That was for the previous one. That's the one for 167. So we're on 168 now. We just, we just did that. 168. 168 and then it's to approve changes to the school calendar. Yeah, right. That's that's we just voted on that one. Okay, sorry. Uh, student report, welcome back, Lauren and Emma. Hello, everyone. It's been a while. Uh, there's not too much to report on. Our Bagley Elementary School School Picture Makeup Day is February 3rd. Um, at LES, Spirit Week is the 8th through the 12th. And then for all elementary schools, Valentine's Day celebrations are the 12th. Um, at the junior high school, you all know they're still hybrid. Um, Wildcat time is continuing with options such as badminton in the gym, study halls, and Valentine card making. And spring sports are starting to begin. Um, the boys junior high baseball team just had tryouts. The girls volleyball team started today. And the new boys um, junior high volleyball team just hired a new coach. As for the senior high school, you're all familiar with the schedule. Um, we've been running on a hybrid schedule for grades 9 to 11 and full time, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday for seniors. Um, we no longer have lunch lunch, but rather A, B, and C lunches. And there was just one concern that was brought to my attention with that schedule was that it's making it difficult for clubs to meet without lunch and learn. Um, everyone seems happy to be back in school. Some people, like I just said, miss the longer lunches and just have, clubs are having a hard time um, finding time to meet. Winter sports are continuing to occur with limited tickets for players for home matches or games. Um, and the Senior High Drama Club has started rehearsing for the Spring Musical, Bright Star Concert Edition, and the professionally recorded virtual show dates are April 23rd to 25th, 2021. Watch for ticket sale information at latrobedramaclub.com. And that is all. Thank you. Thank you, girls. Um, just some, first of all, the kindergarten registration portal opened on the 1st, so that's out there. We are doing registration for kindergarten, but um, Mr. Palmer had asked for some numbers before, and I just wanted to report. Um, we have 3,562 students enrolled at Greater Latrobe, and right now we have 2927 in brick and mortar and 635 online. That 635 uh, number is 18% of our total enrollment. And of that 635 that were online, 65% of those students, or 414, were online at the junior high school or senior high school. So I think that was the number that you wanted. Now, obviously, with the change to full brick and mortar at the junior high school and the senior high school, we'll watch to see whether those numbers go up um, or down. But I will tell you that since the elementary went back, um, five days a week brick and mortar. There really wasn't much of a change in those online numbers. Uh, Bagley decreased by six students. Latrobe Elementary School decreased by five students. And Mountain View decreased by one. So, you know, I probably think we'll see a little give and take. Typically, that's that's how we start. Like what those numbers are going to walk from the 28th, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, and we have a little bit of a shift, but it always seems to balance the books, you know? But I just thought I would put those numbers up. Thank you, Mr. Plankett. On your agenda for next for not next week, two weeks on the 16th, we will have a resolution to approve the tuition students for the 2021 school year. Um, the three first day on the student men listed on your uh, agenda. Um, the curriculum committee meeting minutes from Tuesday, January the 19th are attached. Um, the next curriculum committee meeting will be on Tuesday, March 16th at 5.30 p.m. in the CSC. Thank you. 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 The treasury report, is, the agenda is attached. The payment of bills is attached. And the approval of the tax collection compensation is an attachment for you to review, to discuss the finance. And the next finance meeting, the finance committee meeting minutes from January 12th are attached. And the next finance committee meeting, Tuesday, March 9th, 2021, 530 at the uh, high school library. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, this
facility of operations planning, Mr. Palmer. Thank you. Uh, the next facility, no report this evening. The next facility of operations planning committee meeting will be Thursday, February 4th, 2021, 3.30 p.m. at the administration building. But again, we'll get another five by the time. Mr. Thomas is whether it's virtual or in person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Student activity and recreation, Mr. Casero. I have no report, Mr. Vice President. Uh, the next uh, student activities or recreation committee meeting uh, is to be determined. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Casero. Community relations, Mr. Schroer. The uh, minutes of the Latro GLSD Park and Recreation Commission meeting that was held on January 21st um, are attached to your agenda today. And the next meeting for the Latro GLSD Park and Rec Commission meeting will be Thursday, February 18th at 4.30 at the Latro Municipal Building Council Chambers. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you, Mr. Sherrod. What's more on your meeting? Ms. Main? Thank you. Um, on your agenda in two weeks will be a resolution to approve participation in the WAU Joint Purchasing Consortium. Uh, for 2021-22, authorization for the multi-purpose paper bid. That will be an agenda item in two weeks. The summary of the WIU board meeting minutes from the meeting held on January 26th are attached. And the next WIU committee meeting will be held Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021, at 7 p.m. And that is a virtual meeting. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Transportation, Mr. Music. No report this evening, Mr. Vice President. CWCTC Joint Operation, Mr. Cotto. Thank you, Mr. Cotto. Um, there will be an attachment, um, or there is an attachment to your agenda this evening. Next week, we will be voting on the approval of the right of way and easement agreement, granting Gary Township supervisors temporary and permanent easement over the East West Memorial Clearing Technology Center property to construct, install, operate, and maintain stormwater lines. And it's a it's a part of the property that the students never go to. It's, it's, it's down in the building and it's pretty far away from their main building. So I don't think any of us have a problem with the ROW, correct? The correct. Um, and we had a meeting on January 27th. Um, there's an attachment mechanism for a housekeeping um, of the minutes of that meeting. And our next joint operating meeting is Wednesday, February 24th at 7 p.m. at EWCTC. And that concludes my report, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Thank you. The board policy and PSPA liaison, Mr. Sharaf. Thank you, Mr. McCombs. Um, for your reading, um, board members, we have the first reading of three new board policies. Well, I'm sorry, they're not new board policies. Um, policy 103, um, the Title IX, our procedural document is attached and it remains unchanged from last year. Um, the school security uh, policy 805.2 just has minor changes in the wording. You'll see those um, highlighted uh, regarding the authority of uh, school police. It doesn't change anything but a minor wording change. And also the uh, policy 824, maintaining professional adult student boundaries. Um, there's a change in wording just simply for um, a digital learning environment. So if you take your time to look through those, that's the first read, and we will see them again at future meetings. And um, we, we will be setting a date that's not yet determined for the next board policy meeting. Thank you, Mr. McConnell. Right, question, Mr. Yes. Surratt. Yes. Um, when we go to do the second reading, will you have to take your time to reread all of those again? I think, <laughs> yes. Yes, in fact, I have some more to add to it. <laughs> <laughs> because life just isn't enough fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, board. <laughs> Stick me over there where I'll stay out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> keep it out of the mall. It's good. I'm going to know how I got that assignment. <laughs> when the gets nice, we'll watch her walking outside. Yeah. Turn the page. Yeah. At least you don't have to buy sleep for it. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you need all the money you're saving. Thanks, <laughs> 
Mr. Palmer. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, I have not the report this evening. However, our next technology committee meeting will be Tuesday, February 16th, here at the CSC at 5 30. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Health and Safety Committee, Dr. George. I want to assure our community and our board that all of us are safety has always been our primary concern with the school, students, and staff. This is why we've gone through this. This is why we've done all the things that we've done to protect our students and our staff. Nobody takes any of this lightly. We've all been very, very concerned. And we've done the best that we can to try to ensure the safety of everyone in our school community. This is a risk-benefit decision. Right now, it seems to me that the risk is less for our students and staff than it is to keep these kids home. So that's why we're making this recommendation. We don't want anybody to get sick. I would hate for somebody to get sick and die. Everybody feels that way. You know how bad everyone felt in this community when we lost the staff member all over the terrible disease. We don't want that to happen. And to any, anyone to intimate that we're taking things lightly is just disgusting to me. I think we've done a lot of things in some of this topic. We've tried to do the best we can to protect the safety and health of our students and our community. I hope we don't have to have an ad hoc meeting on this health issue anymore with this coronavirus. And you know, right now you can read the uh, minutes of the last meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Mr. recommendations, Dr. Turper? Yes, um, next week we will have some resignations as well as retirements on our agenda. Hugh Moxon, Chuck, custodian for retirement. Karen Owens, our classroom assistant for retirement. Rissa Suter, custodian, resignation. And Thomas Turnbull, Jr., baseball assistant, resignation. We will also be asking the board to approve professional substitute teachers and to approve support personnel classified positions, which include classroom assistant, a new payroll manager, a part-time secretary for Bagley Elementary School, a health room assistant, and hopefully two custodians. Um, under other business, our parent-teacher conferences will be virtual Thursday, March 11, from 5 to 8 o'clock p.m. And our 8th grade movie Move Up virtual video presentations will be released March 1st at glsd.us, our district website. Also, please watch the Senior High School webpage for a live question and answer session dates that will be posted. Our next regular board meeting will be held Tuesday, February 16th. Please note there is not a meeting next Tuesday. However, Tuesday, February 16th, will be our regular board meeting at 7.30 p.m. Our committee, the whole meeting for March, will be March 9th, and our regular board meeting will be March 16th. Thank you, Mr. McCombs. Thank you, Mr. This will be the second part two of the hearing of the visitor. We have five minutes. Anybody want to stand? Hey, please watch the podium. Thank you. 